Warning, Superpower Review is intended for a mature viewing audience. This video may show images that are not suitable for kids under 13 years old. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Kevin Vidini here for Superpower Review. Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're gonna be giving Venom issue number 27 a review, but it's not just gonna be me. I am not alone today. I'm joined by one of my good friends from the IG comic family. We have Joseph Reed on the show. What's up, Joe? What's up, Kevin? Long time doing, no man? see, man. Thank you so much for being on the show today. No problem, man. And yeah, it's been a while. It has Glad been a be while. Back. You know, last time you were on the show, uh, I referenced you as the encyclopedia of symbiotes. But you know what, Joe? I think we're going to boost it up a notch today. I think we're going to, we're just going to call you Null. You are officially the god of symbiotes because you just know everything <laughs> and anything that needs to be known about symbiotes. <laughs> hey, man, I've, I've been called a lot of names and uh, I'm down with what whatever no, no fitting so guys uh, before we get into today's review I just want to remind you guys if you like today's content be sure to smash that like button and lastly subscribe to the channel to show your support you could potentially win this spawn number one CGC graded at a 9.4 once the channel reaches 2,000 subscribers so smash that subscribe button all right guys show that support so um, Joe, we have a lot to talk about in this issue because a lot of things happened in here. Um, so why don't you just go ahead and talk about some of the things that you liked about this issue. I, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine you have too much that you disliked about this, but I would like to hear your thoughts on it. I actually really enjoyed this whole Venom Beyond arc, and it's possibly my favorite since the origin of Null. Uh, I like the direction it's going. I like the fact that uh, I've discussed this. I don't know if it's really acknowledged, but the symbiotes you can um, you can pretty much wear them to like jump like time and space, it's kind of what Reed Richards did. Yep. With going back to uh, the Ultimate Universe, I like the fact that they're tying that in. There's really no complaints about any of it, really, man. Like, I'm really liking it. If as a matter of fact, if I really want to like pick at it, the only thing I don't like is I'm still not sold on the look of Codex. Okay. Like, I got to see him in action, and that that's my only complaint. Like, it's technically his first appearance, but we really don't see anything. Right, right. So, yeah, like we said in the beginning of the issue, like, there's so much to talk about. I have, like, notes here about, you know, as I was reading it, I was going through all the stuff that happens, but, you know, just this obviously uh, takes place after uh, part one. Uh, Eddie and Dylan are in a whole different universe that they don't even know where they are. We don't know where they are. Uh, Venom and Virus have a epic battle in this, in this whole issue. Uh, were you happy with uh, Virus uh, coming back right away? Because I thought that we weren't going to see Virus for a little bit. I thought he was going to go in through the portal to, to, to follow Eddie, but I was wasn't really expecting uh, virus to be like, okay, this is this is round two, ding ding, let's go, Venom. <laughs> I actually really like that. Like the fight between these two is just, it's just badass, man. It's been a while since I've really seen Venom just like throw down with somebody, and the fact that it, he's kind of not holding back, you know what I mean? He's like trying to bite appendages off and all that, but like virus just keeps coming at him, and I, I, I'm so happy with it. Like the fact that. Like you said, like the second they realize that they're not, you know, in their home world or whatever, mm -hmm. like Virus just jumps up and they just start brawling. And then <laughs> I, I just loved it. I really like Virus. I think he's such a cool character. Yeah, he's he's interesting. Uh, would still really like to know uh, who he is, and I think we'll get uh, more a little into that as we break down the the comic a little more. But also during this fight scene, uh, we find out that you know in this new universe that. Uh, this is a different hive that the uh, the Venom symbiote is normally used to. And uh, during the fight, there's complications because he doesn't have uh, his powers. He's very limited to his powers, but he does eventually connect to the hive and he ends up getting a, a brand new power and that power is to, uh, to absorb, uh, I guess, kinetic energy and use it against his opponent or exhaust it. Uh, do you like this new power that Venom has? What's your thoughts on that? I actually love that because that makes this issue canon. I yes. don't know if you guys can see it, but Venom the End, it makes it canon. And he's pretty much, what he's doing right there is what he does. Uh, I really like that Donnie pretty much tied this one shot into the whole Venom mythos or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm actually hoping that he can continue to be able to do that because, I mean, if you really think about it, 
that's almost like godlike powers. So it, another thing I really enjoy about this is, like I've said before, the symbiote has always been labeled as like a just as big as a threat as Magneto and Doctor Doom and the Red Skull and you know all that. And like that right there puts him on the map. If he's able just to walk around and just last people, with, like it's pretty much game over. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. I'm hoping I'm hoping to see some like other new powers. You know, since he is around this hive and it's a different. Um, there'll be some things he does that we still haven't seen him do. I'm just curious to whether he's going to retain these powers. Like that's my question too. When he too. returns back, right? You know, is he still going to have it? Because if he if he continues to do that, I think that would be really cool. He would be very very powerful. That, but but that, that, that's that's my same question. Will he retain these powers uh, if when he does go back home? If he's going to be able to stand toe to toe with Null, I would imagine that he's got to be pretty powerful. The fact that he pulled out pretty much the Necro Sword, if you go back to Absolute Carnage, yep. and he was able just to stab, stab him one time and like just the end to the Absolute Carnage thing, I would imagine that's a lot of power because uh, Cletus or whatever you want to call it at the time, he was just running through everybody. Like the Hulk wore the symbiote and he just mopped the floor with him. Right. And then Eddie puts the symbiote on, pulls the sword out, literally just pokes him with it, and he just explodes like. That's that's pretty powerful. So, I I hope that like I said that they continue to show more powers and just hopefully he retains this stuff. Right, exactly. Like you said, if if he is gonna go up against no, uh, Venom really needs to make some very big changes and upgrades uh, to himself in order to take him on. Now, uh, one of the things that happened in this uh, in this issue too, and like I said, we're just going through the through the through the whole comic book issue, breaking it down and seeing what we like and dislike. Um, so Venom uh, and Virus are going at it, and it gets uh, it it causes such a commotion that uh, that it brings on the Avengers of this universe, and these Avengers uh, are both wearing uh, you know the symbiote logo, and they are are essentially symbiotes uh what do you think about this that's pretty cool too because they're basically just like um rex strickland we thought it was we thought it was some dude and then eddie and the symbiote found out that it was, it was a symbiote that was playing the image of a guy so that's that's basically exactly what's going on with the avengers as we're seeing that happen again so that that ties right back into the first issue of the whole series so that was pretty pretty cool i i didn't know what to expect i thought maybe they were just venomized but yeah they had like the human faces so yeah. it kind of threw me off but the fact that they're pretty much pulling a record and they're just taking on the form of the avengers but they're actually symbiotes like that's pretty cool yeah that was that's actually cool. a lot that's a lot cooler if it was actually the, the avengers that timeline right and uh, one of the the coolest parts in, in that, in, in my opinion, uh, was uh, when Virus uh, shoots up uh, Captain America, and you see him blasting. You're like, oh man, like Captain America's dead, and he just reforms. It's like, yeah, no. And then uh, this was one of the cooler things about this too, because uh, as now the Avengers are turning their attention to Virus, uh, Venom f escapes with Dylan, and uh, they take uh, Virus into the hive because he has anti-venom tech. And this is where things really get interesting because we get to see the very first appearance of a character in this issue, which is Codex. Now, there's a lot of things that can be happening. There are so many scenarios uh, that happen in this scene. Uh, like I said, we get the first appearance of Codex. Virus gets his helmet taken off. And we also learn that Virus, whoever he is, needs the suit in order to live. Now, do you think that um, gives us a little more of a hint who Virus could potentially be? It, I think it does. Um, I have been thinking for a while that Virus is pretty much Lee Price, but... Like some of the things he says, he there's a lot of foreshadowing where they keep talking about, oh, you know, there were, I would need a whole army or you would need a whole army to stop me. Like there's a lot of army references, mm. which makes me think of Lee Price. Um, the fact that Carnage pretty much stripped him of his codex, he said something along the lines of, I, you know, don't take it from me. I need it or else I'll die. Right. So <clears throat> if the suit, whoever the virus is, if the suit's keeping him alive, it could be very well something, some sort of scenario like that. How like, oh, don't, don't take codex, I'll die. You know, it could be like that. But then again, just talking to people and you know, just 
really looking into it more, it could also be Mac Gargan, which is a prior Venom host. And the last right. time him and Eddie crossed paths, he tried to run from a fight in absolute carnage against all the, you know, the doppelganger horde. symbiotes. Yeah. And Eddie threw him literally straight to carnage, which was Norman Osborn. And he, like, starts to rip his, like, spine out. And midway, you know, Carnage stops it. So he's he's practically paralyzed. It has to be one or the other. But the fact that it's someone that needs the suit to live, like, both of them have sustained injuries, you know, that, that could have killed them and are both still alive. I, the reason why I say Lee Price is still alive is in one of the, um, the Venom Maniacs at the back of one of the issues, I forget which issue, but it was shortly after they showed, you know, the free comic book day. Mm -hmm. They said something to somebody along the lines of, we don't think this is the last we've seen of Lee Price. So for them to write that, that that's that's like a hint. Yeah. So if it's not Lee Price, Lee Price is eventually going to pop back up somehow. Like, or else they wouldn't have published that. Right. At least I would think so. Right. And, you know, it's so funny because when I talked about uh, in my previous review how I think that virus could be Lee Price, so many commented, uh, so many people commented like, no, Lee Price is dead. Uh, Carnage took out his spine. But uh, I remembered, and I can't remember the issue number that you just referenced too, but I was like, no, they, it, 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 it has to be Lee Price. There can still be a way that this character could still be alive. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I like the, that, that you thought about about uh, Matt Gargan too, uh, when you know he when he was in the Absolute Carnage storyline, uh, he is uh, paralyzed, and that would be a good reason why he needs the suit in order to even fight or stand and walk. But uh, yeah, I never I never th gave uh, Matt Gargan a thought to be honest. But that that's a that's an interesting um, that's an that's an interesting guess. I'm just trying to really think, like especially in this storyline. I mean, it could be anybody from all the older stuff because Kate's is good at tying things in. <clears throat> but from this storyline, Lee Price was in prison looking at what he thought was Eddie, flashing his Venom tattoo on his chest like, oh, they call me Venom here. Mm -hmm. And then that happens to him. So if he's like a paraplegic, like right there, you Eddie, you ruined my life. Because this guy keeps saying, to Eddie, not to Venom, but to Eddie, that you ruined my life. Right, right. And then... um. Uh, same thing with uh, Matt Gargan. He literally threw him in there, and he just immediately got paralyzed. So there's there's two scenarios where Eddie has directly ruined someone's life within this storyline. So both of them would have access to the, that type of tech because we see uh, Virus is using like an old busted Green Goblin glider, glider. He's got the pumpkin bombs. Yep. He's basically got an Iron Man suit. So, you know, I could see both of them, especially Matt Gargan, having access to that tech. And um, so now let's let's get into this Codex character. So now, like when this storyline began, uh, me included, and I don't know how you felt uh, or what you thought about, but I think everybody thought that this world was taken over by Null because we saw uh, the the insignia. But it is a tad bit different. It's not exactly like a Null symbol. What do you think of this Codex character? Yeah, like you said, um, I kind of figured maybe. It was Noel, like maybe it's an alternate version of Noel, if there even is one. Mm. There very well could be. Um, the logo does look the same, but it doesn't have the legs separated, so it's kind of like a different logo. And yeah. the bottom goes in the point and not like a, a, a dragon tail like Noel's does. Right, right. So the logo is definitely different. Um, the whole, the, like, it, it's hard, it's really, I don't know what to think at, the, at this moment, but I wasn't expecting. It seems like Codex might be, he's definitely got something to do with Noel. He might be a different type of version, or I, I strongly feel like that could be that timeline's version of Eddie Brock or possibly Dylan, because what's revealed at the end, it de definitely makes me think, like, there's something going on with that character. He has to be tied into them. So it, I don't think he's exactly Noel or anything, but he maybe figured out how to tap into that. Yeah, and my I'm sorry, I'm side, no, 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 no. That this is that's the whole point of the show is is to, to really get into it. Uh, my thought initially was that it was this universe's Dylan Brock. That's how I thought of it, and 
you know, it was just one of those gut feelings and, you know, uh, I'm going with my gut here and I want to say that this could be this uh, version of Dylan Brock for this universe. That would be very interesting and I've been saying this for a very long, long time. If it is Dylan, Eddie might be left with no choice but to kill his own son. I feel like no matter what, because Dylan himself, he keeps having all these weird visions and null, like making him do all this weird stuff. Like there's there's so much potential that Dylan could just snap, just get really mad about the whole situation, you know, with just everything with his life. And he could turn evil. And if he does, that's like the biggest threat next all that Eddie would ever have to face. And he would, what do you, he would have to kill him. So he would have to kill his own son. And I, I can kind of see that almost happening with Codex. Huh. A lot of people have been saying. A lot of people have been saying that they feel like a uh, virus isn't going to stick around. And especially now that he's in this timeline, that he's he's going to be there forever. I think virus. He's crafty. The way he's just like jumping through time and just nonstop on Eddie. Like I can see him getting back. Codex, how? However, I can see he's ultimately either going to die or they're going to do something like they did with Noel and, like, trap him somehow. Like, right. That's a character I don't think we're going to see much of after this. I think he's specifically for this arc. I think uh, I, I want to add a few things to what you just said there. Uh, first of all, Eddie killing Dylan Brock sounds absolutely crazy from going all this time uh you know protecting him and you know being a really good father figure well doing the best that he can <laughs> um and um i think that uh, virus i mean if virus doesn't stick around i really feel like that virus could just potentially be uh, the number one villain to uh, to venom in my opinion so i would be really disappointed if virus doesn't stick around um, he's got to he's got to stick around for a while. I mean, there's so much potential there. There so is much. a lot of potential there, and he is a very good. Uh, I, I like him as a villain. Uh, I don't know if if when I find out or when we find out who he really is, if it will kill it for me or for for the audience. I'm not sure. Um, but um, saying that whole thing with you know um, Codex and possibly being uh, this fu this future's uh, Dylan. Do you think that maybe, because this was one of my thoughts, do you think maybe that if this Codex guy is Dylan Brock, that he could be p potentially a friend and teach Dylan the things that he needs to know in order to take over No? If he is Dylan and he pretty much gets like a one-on-one -on -one session with Dylan, I, I believe that one -on -one. Hundred percent. He's gonna, you know, try and sway him one way or another. Like, look, this is what you truly are. This is what we're meant to be. Uh huh. Yada yada yada. I, I can totally, totally see that. That's something to think about. Mm -hmm. I never really thought of it that way. So there's just and th and this is the thing about Donny Cates. There's just so many possibilities to where this story could go, and I just absolutely love how he writes it. Now, uh, let me just uh, get into another thing here. Uh, one of the last things of the breakdown of the issue, and then we'll give this uh, a, a full blown review. Um, so in the in the end of the issue, uh, you know, Venom and uh, Dylan make refuge in the sewers and we kind of see this resistance team and uh, you know we see Agent Venom coming up and we uh, you know of course Eddie thinks that it's Flash Thompson but uh, you know mind-blowing it's actually this universe's Anne. Uh, what do you think what did you think of that? Well right away because it was Anne and the way she reacted to Eddie I feel like it, it, as crazy as it sounds, like <laughs> I could see her leaving that timeline and coming back with with Eddie, Agreed. and they re, you know, start a new relationship. They're trying to be parents to Dylan. Agreed. Which, if Codex is Dylan, obviously Ann lost track of him. Like you know what I mean? They could try to rekindle the relationship, but that would also bring back the Agent Venom symbiote. Yes. Which could potentially go to anybody. Yes. So that was really cool. However, when when I first saw the panel, I was just like, you know, this is awesome. I like the fact that they keep – it's like Donny Cates is just trying to bring Agent Venom back, and he's eventually going to do it. So I was really excited about it, and when, you know, she pulled mask and it was her, 
that that is kind of a mind blower because I I thought it would be Flash and I was just like mm-hmm. you know oh here we go here it is <laughs> so it kind of threw me for a loop but it like I said the fact that it's her I don't even understand why like if it's pretty much like the symbiote is law in that universe and if you go against that law you're like an agent so there's all these different agent venoms right, right I don't know right. what the hell is going on with that I don't know what to expect <laughs> but it's really cool but it's just it raises so many questions and it just has so much potential. The fact that Eddie starts talking to her like, you know, Flash, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, you know, do you mean the, the ex-president of the United States or the world or whatever? Like yeah, yeah, Eugene yeah. Flash Thompson? I thought that was kind of funny. Like he would become the president some other timeline. Yeah, yeah, that that would be a sort sort of his character. Um, so I would totally agree with you. I feel like that this is going to maybe rekindle the the relationship between Eddie and Anne, uh, and maybe if 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 uh, Dylan doesn't die, like you say, uh, maybe they can get together and you know properly parent this child, maybe. Exactly, and now this time Eddie has plenty of experience with the symbiote. Now Ian has been an agent venom for however freaking long like they both have a very good idea of you know how to keep an eye on him like i might be looking too far in all this but i don't you know what i mean that could be what that could be what keeps them you know keeps dylan in line and 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 like you were saying um however backtracking what i was saying if eddie does have to kill codex and codex really is in that timeline and he happens to do it in front of dylan like that could that could you know Dylan could look at that as kind of weird like you just killed, killed me and didn't even blink <laughs> like so there's like I, I I think Dylan's definitely going to stick around for a very long time me but too. I have no idea how it's going to turn out we've we've Literally been saying no this for a long time Joe that we we really believe that Dylan could potentially be the next gen Venom yeah um that's that's very true. Uh, with this whole King and Black series coming up, Dylan is going to be involved heavily in that, and I feel like Noel is, is going to pretty much just mow everybody over trying to get to him. So, I, like I said, the future future of Dylan, I don't know what to expect, man. Like I feel like he's going to stick around long, but you know he could end up dying in that series for all I know. Maybe Noel could realize, like, you know, no, I feel like Noel purposely kind of helped make him I think and so too, if yeah. he goes against null if, if he goes against null then in typical fashion you know he's useless so he might just man it, it's just that's, that's what i like <laughs> about this this uh, venom beyond there's just with how many what is it like part two part three or something like that? this I is part, part this two. is part two and part three is due to come out soon just with the two issues there's there's just so many questions like Right. It's it's nuts. So many questions and so many uh, un, unanswered uh, questions. And uh, so, you know, I would like to see uh, Agent Venom come back into our regular universe because I miss Agent Venom. And uh, I, I really, f- I was really bummed when they killed off uh, Flash Thompson and um, that Red Goblin uh, series, that series that fell yeah. flat on its face. But um, so... Let's uh, give this uh, this issue a full blown review. Uh, as you know, guys, it is tradition to give a review based off of the CGC grades. So, Joe, if you were to give Venom issue twenty seven, Venom Beyond Part Two, a CGC grade, what would you give this issue? I'm gonna give it a nice, uh, nice fresh nine point eight. Wow. Because honestly, there's nothing there's nothing I didn't like about it except for. The fact that they showed Codex and he was just kind of like, you know, get this thing from me. And that was like it. <laughs> like, I really I really need to see him in action, you know what I mean? To really appreciate. Because he, he looks kind of, I don't see t- too much uh, of a symbiotic look to him. He's got the chains like Spawn, which I guarantee he's going to use just like Spawn. He looks like a mix of so many different characters. And that right there just... It just doesn't sell me. Now, if I were to give Venom issue number 27 a review using the CGC grades, I'm going to give this book a 9.6. 
And the reason because of that is because I was not a fan of uh, Juan Gideon's uh, artwork. I, I just thought that it was uh, too cartoonish and there were some panels that just looked awful to me. Uh, some panels looked okay, but I didn't like a majority of the artwork. I, I would really love to see Ryan Stegman back on this or Ivan Coelho. I actually love Ivan Coelho's artwork. I think his uh, artwork matches the story really yeah. well. And uh, that's why I'm going to give it a 9.6. But this book is packed with action. It gives you more questions to what is to come in the future. And that's why I'm going to give it a 9.6. Joe, before we go, okay, uh, I know we're running out of time, but maybe you can give me a very quick answer. But two years ago, okay, you came on the show and we gave Venom issue number one a review. Did you expect any of this to happen? Did you expect Donny Cates to take uh, Venom where it is today? And did you expect Venom to get so hot? That would be my last question of the day. I, I knew Venom was going to get hot because blaming on the movie coming out or whatever, like for, for as long as I've been collecting Venom, it was never like it is now. Even the Agent Venom, it didn't really take off. And that's ultimately why it got canceled. But... With the popularity of Venom lately, I kind of already knew it was going to be hot just just from that. But then you put Donny Cates as a writer, and it's it's just guaranteed. Everything he does is gold. <laughs> so there's that. I knew it was going to be a, a good series. I knew it was going to do the way it did. But there are a few things that are very surprising to me. The, like I said, um, bringing in um, the evil version of Reed Richards, that really... At first, it was just like, that's such a random character, but the more it's gone on, like, it's it's one of the best characters to bring to that storyline for so many reasons. Um, the Dylan thing, I did not expect that. No. That, if if you would have talked to me two issues before that, that dropped, I had no idea it was going to go in that direction. Uh, right before the whole Absolute Carnage series, I kind of didn't really know where things were going, but it's all been leading up to bringing no old earth and it's been it's it's been a long process but it's been it's been good the whole time it has i didn't yeah. expect it to be as good as it is like the beyond i didn't know what to think i think the whole the whole comic community collectively when everyone first saw uh issue what is it, issue 26 with virus on it yeah everyone's like what the hell is that you know what i mean so <laughs> i didn't expect this uh, story arc to be as good as it is. Right, and I will agree. And uh, I, I wasn't expecting it to get as big and uh, actually turning people. I can't tell you how many people I, I'm friends with, and they're actually turning uh, into Venom and like, oh wait, I, I can't believe how good Venom is. And uh, I wasn't expecting this at all. I wasn't expecting the vast amount of new characters we're going to get into this uh, car and in, into Venom. And uh, like I said, I, I, I'm kind of blown away where Donny Cates is taking it. I'm very happy uh, to say as a Venom fan. That that this is probably one of the best uh, Venom stories or the, one of the best writers for Venom. It's, it's, it's about damn time. That's what I'm saying because we've had Venom mm -hmm. for uh, 30 years and uh, this, is, uh, this is finally the time where a Venom fan can be happy and excited. So, uh, Joe, I want to thank you so much for being on today's show, man. It's always glad, I'm always happy to have you on. You're, you're, you're a fantastic guest and I can't wait to have you back, man. Hey, man, thanks for bringing me on. It's always fun talking with you. I feel like we talk Venom all day, every day anyway. <laughs> yeah. So this is always fun. Um, if my computer, if I'm, if my video is cutting out in any type of way, like I sincerely apologize yeah. anybody it's watching. And if it is and you still continue to watch, thank you very much for that. And see, Kevin, any, anytime you want to do reviews, man, you know I'm always, I'm always down to do this. Maybe we'll get you on for part three, but your computer's been fine, by the way. So, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Leave some feedback in the comment section. And don't forget to click on that subscribe button if you want to potentially win the spawn number one CGC graded at a 9.4. So, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.